Hi everybody, in this video we are going to uh, go ahead and learn how to map MIDI. We're going to learn how to also edit the macro map on um, mapping. We're going to be using groups to map uh, to macro knobs. We're going to be doing a bunch of things. So. I've got this track that I have written uh, so that I don't have to suffer any sort of copyright um, problems and it sounds a little bit like this. Cool, alright, so what are we going to do with it? We want to create some effects that we can use over top of this tune. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into audio effects. I'm going to grab one filter, two filters. I'm going to grab maybe um, a redux uh, and a ping pong delay. Cool, right, sweet. So uh, we've got all these filters set up. What does it do to the sound? At the moment, it's just delaying it a lot. Um, let's go ahead and set up an interesting device. So I'm gonna click uh, auto filter, hold shift, click the ping pong delay and go right click and group. Sweet, I can press this knob to bring up the macro knobs okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a master knob I'm gonna make one knob that controls a whole lot of parameters and it's gonna control the on and off of the filter because when I have the knob all the way at zero I don't want any of these effects to be on I want the track this track to flow cleanly through without any interference uh, from any of these effects. So then once I start moving the knob off of zero and I start building it up, I want the effects to start obviously taking place and I want it to be controlling the filter cutoff of the, both of the filters and I want the filters moving in opposite directions to one another. Um, I want the resonance to be increasing. Uh, I want the bit crusher to be increasing. Uh, and bit crushing the sound and then eventually I want the ping pong delay to come in and start uh, affecting the sound as well and I want to control all of that with one knob and I want to do some advanced sort of semi advanced kind of mapping and routing okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to right click the frequency and I'm going to map that to the master knob okay so now when I move that master knob it's controlling that frequency okay cool that's perfect um, so we've got one filter moving. Uh, this is a, a low pass filter. And then I've got another low pass filter. I don't want that to be a low pass. I want it to be a high pass. Cool. So I'm going to have two filters and they're going to be moving um, basically in opposite directions from one another. So as that one closes, that one will be closing and I'll slowly be kind of squeezing the sound, so to speak. Uh, and as it's moving down, I want the resonance to be increasing. And as it's also moving, I want the the down sampling to increase. So how do we do all of that? It's not as difficult as you'd think. So we've mapped the frequency. Let's map the resonance. Let's also map the on and off. Let's map the on and off on the second filter. Um, so let's maybe try uh, auto filter one uh, and rename auto filter two. So that's just control R to rename. Uh, so we've mapped the on and off. Let's map the frequency. Let's wrap map the resonance, let's map the on and off of the redux, the downsampling, the on and off of the ping pong and the dry wet. Okay, so now when I move that, I crank everything up. <laughs> so we can right click on the one of the map parameters, one of the parameters that has a, a green dot, because if I, uh, I, well, I mean, I can click anything and I go on edit macro map okay so now I've got this map uh, here and you can see everything is mapped to the macro of the master knob and it tells you the path so auto filter one is obviously that filter uh, and it's got the device on parameter mapped it's got the frequency parameter mapped and it's got the resonance and so on and so forth so auto filter two redux and then ping pong delay cool 
All right. So what we have with the device on, if we start moving this knob, you'll notice that it doesn't actually turn on uh, and activate until we get over the halfway point. So that's 64. Okay. So basically how this works is it's saying from zero to 63, uh, in terms of value, so zero through to 63 on the knob, the device is going to be off. From 64 through to 127, the device is going to be on. Okay, so all I want is that zero value to be off, but as soon as it move to, moves to one, it can turn on. So if I change this value to one, you can see that was I was changing that for the auto filter one, and if I move that slightly, um, and if I move that slightly, you'll see it instantly turns on. These ones are still off. I haven't changed the mapping yet, but that boom! As soon as I get it off the zero point, that filter turns on. So that's fantastic. So I'm going to go to the device on for the the filter two, and I'm going to set that to one. I'm going to go to the device on for the, the bit crusher or the redux and set that to one. But I don't want the ping pong delay to turn on straight away. I'm actually quite happy that it doesn't turn on until it's at around 64. So I'll leave the ping pong delay. So now they're all off. As I move it off the zero, these three activate. And then once I get over 64, the ping pong also activates. Cool. All right. So what I need is that when it's at zero, I need this filter to actually be open uh, because as soon as I move it, let's play. I'm hardly getting any, I'm hardly getting any sound because it's filtering everything out. So I need that filter to be resting completely open. So that's auto filter one. Okay. Let's find it. Uh, that's the frequency that we're talking about. All right, that's here. So basically I just need to invert these values. So if I grab that and pull that all the way up, that works. And then I grab that, pull it all the way down. So now that filter rests at zero, completely open. And even when I move it and these are activated, most of the sound is still coming through. So that's fantastic. What else do I need to change? Uh, this filter, the second filter appears to be working just fine, but you'll notice that the resonance is going all the way to 125 and the filters are becoming uh, all the way closed. So, um, and also let's, let's play and increase. There stops being any useful sound coming through by the time you get to about 80. So there's nothing happening all the way through here. So there's a lot of dead action happening in this knob. We can remove that. So um, let's go ahead and uh, we're not playing, so we can pull that down. Let's say we don't want the resonance coming all the way up. Let's say the maximum value we want the resonance to be at is 60. So I'll go filter one resonance, maximum value 60. Uh, I'll find filter two, maximum value 60. Cool. We don't need it to be going too extreme. So when it's all the way there, the maximum value on that knob, 60. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. And I think the resonance, that's done. We don't have to touch it anymore. Now, what we want is on filter one, we want the minimum value um, or the maximum value. Yeah, the maximum value to rest at, say, let's say 500 hertz. OK, let's say 550 hertz. So when that filter, when the knob is all the way at, at 100 percent, we want that filter to rest at about there. And when we have it at 100 percent, we want this filter to rest a little bit lower so let's say oh wrong way let's say we want it to rest at around 1500 cool so now the filters they don't go all the way closed uh because there was a creation of a lot of dead space when it was doing that so if we go ahead and try it now uh let's pull it all the way closed
there's a lot more uh, interesting kind of, uh, you know, all the way up to all the way up to a hundred percent, you still got a bit of sound. And as soon as you start coming down, it's letting stuff through again. Cool. Um, and then finally, maybe we could say that the, the redux is maybe just going a bit too hard. So we could experiment with bringing that down. Let's say that we want the maximum value of the down sampling to be at around 30. So let's go ahead and play that. Cool, that seems to be working all right. And then let's do one last thing because I just want to stimulate our imagination. Um, let's try this, see how it works. I haven't actually practiced this yet, but this is just an idea off the top of my head. So let's go ahead and close the macro map. Let's get a utility and let's chuck it on the end here. Okay, so with that utility, all we want to do is we want the master knob to also control the balance. Okay, so at zero... Maybe this won't work because it works like a pan, uh, like a pot. Let's not do that right now. Um, I was going to try and have it mapping so that it kind of spun around. Um, and maybe I'll work on that and I'll show you what I come up with later. But I won't do it on the video right now because I think I'll make a mistake because I didn't realize that the, the resting point for the knob is not in the center. So mapping that out might be quite difficult. Um, but we can come back to that another day. So... What we want to do now is we actually want to map it to the controller. So we can click on MIDI up here and we can go ahead and we can select that knob. We can click that parameter and then we can come to our device that has knobs and we can wiggle one of the knobs. So I've wiggled this knob. You can see up here now that says CC18. So it's referring to the knob here on my APC40. I'll turn that off, move that knob, now I'm moving that control. So let's play the track through a little bit and have a mess around. Okay, it's building. So you can see how you can start actually using that. Uh, you can play it live, you can record the automation in, and you can really mess around with it. And you can go in any direction that you'd like with these sorts of device chains and mapping the knobs. And it's a lot of fun. Um, so hopefully this video was useful for you guys. Um, I'll probably do some more in the future where I'm doing even more complicated sort of chains and uh, show my workflow and how I use them in actual projects. Um, but for now, that's the end. Thank you very much. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, you can uh, find my music pages uh, in the links in the comment description below, you can jump on our Discord server, I've got the link for that down below. And I just want to alert you guys about um, Steemit, DTube and DSound. So if you guys are into cryptocurrency, I've got links for all of that down in the video description. I've got profiles on there, so jump on and follow me and uh, these platforms look really promising and look like they're really going to change things for content producers. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in another video.